merely because science or the medical field now is looking at these things and seeing how they can integrate these practices into today's medicine. So just want you to be aware of that. Next, reflexology. Someone asked about reflexology. It says reflexology is the physical act of applying pressure to the feet and hand with a specific thumb, finger, and hand techniques without the use of oil or lotion. It is based on a system of zones and reflex areas that reflect an image of the body on the feet. I'm going to stop there. Basically what they're saying is they can deal with your kidneys based on pressing certain pressure points on your feet. They can deal with your heart based on dealing with certain pressure points around your toes. And they can deal with certain other rest, the rest parts of your body, dealing with the pressure points on your feet, toes, and so on and so forth, feet and hands. And if it base, it's based on the premise that such work affects a physical change in the body. There's also something called pressure point therapy, which they're both very similar, where they exert pressure on certain points within your body, and that also promotes healing. Reflexology has its origin also in Egypt, or Egyptology, Egyptian medicine. So it goes way back even to the time of God's early people, the Israelites. If you come up later on, I can show you even a chart that they showed where, or a picture, or hieroglyph, hieroglyphics showing where they are actually practicing this art. Now, God's people have nothing to do with the healing methods that come out of Egypt, correct? Okay, all right. Now, acupuncture. It says the per perspective from which an acupuncturist views health and sickness hinges on the con concept of vital energy. And Dr. Grievous mentioned this earlier about this whole thing about energy flow and energetic balance and energetic imbalance. It says, just as the Western medical doctor monitors the blood flowing through blood vessels and the messages traveling via the nervous system, the acupuncturist assesses the flow and distribu distribution of vital energy. So supposedly they're measuring energy and energy flow through the body. And as a result, we've seen where they take the needles and so on. I guess that's what they call them, needles, and they insert them. But did you know that this method or whatever they call it, it actually gives a person good results? So much so to, I think, the UCLA Medical Center and a few other research colleges are examining these methods to see how they can be integrated and mixed in with today's traditional medicine. And it, we're doing these things based on the results that people are getting. The world doesn't know any better, but someone mentioned earlier that many of our people are going after these practices. We are neglecting the laws of health that God has given us, and we're seeking after the ways of the enemy. But yet at the same time, what we're seeing, along with these ways come other things as well. Along with these ways come a whole nother way of thinking, a whole nother way sometimes of even worship itself. So just something I want us to think about. It says acupuncture was first discussed in the Ch ancient Chinese medical text. I can't even pronounce that name. But this is some 2,000 years ago when it was introduced. So it's been around for a while. And like I said, people are actually getting results from it. It says during the 6th century, improved uh, transportation and communications throughout Asia, throughout the Buddhist community, it became a major form of religious medicine. So we see that there's even somewhat of a spiritual connection there with this type of uh, healing, or false healing, if you will. Yes? Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Her point was that a lot of these particular methods look within, calling us 
on us to look within ourselves to find healing rather than, in a nutshell, pretty much looking to God for our healing, but also utilizing his ways of health, the methods of health that he's given us. Yes. Uh, her right. Her comment is that, from what she understands, is that demons are associated with these methods of healing. And that is true. If they're from Satan, then he's going to have his imps involved as well. So yeah, we can say that. Now, does that mean that some of the people who are doing this are actually um, knowingly venturing up on the ground of the enemy? Some of them don't. But then some of them do. Which ones are which? You know, I don't know if we can necessarily tell, but then sometimes the Lord will give us discernment when we are following out the, way, the ways that he has given us. There's a great deal of discernment that comes with that. But when you're teetering on trying to figure out which one you're going to serve, you can be open up to anything that comes along. Yes, Sister Cedar. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, many, she was saying that when she had an accident and hurt her foot, they were giving her acupuncture, and in essence, the pain went away pretty much, or did it help? Okay. Okay. And what she was saying, there's... Mm -hmm. especially when God's methods of health and healing are made a part of your whole healing process I'm going to hold your question and I'm going to take this one more and we're going to move on the, oh, it's something called she was asking me about bee stinging or something called AP, API therapy there's still some research going on with that because supposedly the venom within the bee itself or its thing, it has certain, um, I wouldn't say neurotoxins, but something that happens neurologically that actually helps with certain pains. But still there's research being done in that area. So I don't know a whole lot about it to say yay or nay. It sounds a little hokey to me, but you know that's just my, my own opinion. Now, yoga. Mm -hmm. Yoga is merely um, relaxation techniques, but it says yoga is an ancient Indian body of knowledge that dates back more than 500 years. I mean, 5,000 5, years. It says yoga is about the union of a person's own consciousness and universal consciousness. Universal consciousness. That sounds real spiritualistic, doesn't it? Universal consciousness is just bringing you in a conscious state of mind with all of nature and everything around you. You become a part of that. It's a form of relaxation and so on and so forth. But we know that we can utilize deep breathing techniques. Y'all, do you know about deep breathing? How to do deep breathing techniques? Where you breathe in, and you, you should expand when you breathe in. Hold it for 10, 15 seconds, sometimes even longer then. Exhale slowly. It accomplishes the same thing, but it's an approved way actually for relaxation. That also helps to lower the bl blood pressure as well. Just simple deep breathing techniques. Well, once I mention yoga, regardless of what they're doing, it, it doesn't fall into a way of practice. And that's what I'm doing, sharing with you all these things that are not good, even the stretching and so on and so forth. I mean, you can stretch without yoga, you know? You don't need yoga necessarily to actually do your proper stretching. You can work up to doing your proper stretching over a period of time, especially if you're not used to doing that. It says, ancient yogas believed that in order for a man to be in harmony with himself and his environment, he has to integrate the body, mind, and spirit. 
For these three to be integrated, emotion, action, and intelligence must be in balance. So what the yogis found out is that a way to achieve and maintain this balance is, and it is done through exercise, breathing, and meditation. These are three main yoga structures. So we see integrated within that exercise. That's a good thing. And the breathing techniques that they use, that's a good thing as well. The meditation, if we're meditating on the word of God, but what they want you to do is sit down and let your mind just go. And at that point, when the mind is open up, the enemy can just come in in some way, shape, form, or another. So something to share with those when you hear them talking about yoga. Who and what are Christians turning to for healing? Or what are we as Christians turning to for healing? I'm going to turn to a scripture in 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Wait, wait, wait. I think that's actually second. Second King. Yes. It's Second Kings, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. And it says, And Ahaziah fell down through the lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go. Inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I should recover of this disease. It says, But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it not because there is, no, there is not a god in Israel that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron? And so, in principle, what is happening with us when we experience certain diseases, sicknesses, and so on and so forth, who are we seeking out or seeking after for our healing? Are we seeking after God? Are we looking to see how his laws of health have been violated? Some of us don't know these things, but that's part of the whole purpose of the teaching that we've done here. It's to bring us back in harmony, to bring us back into harmony with God's true methods of health and healing. Mm -hmm. And we know what God's methods of healing are. Pure air, sunlight, abstemoniousness, rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water, and finally trust in divine power. It says these are the true remedies. Now, Satan's ways, I'm going to just go back through this, ways of uh, healing or false healing, it says to eliminate toxins through colonic cleansing, as we discussed, on the foot baths and so on and so forth. God's ways help the body filter itself through the eight laws of health. We understand that in the book Pathways, and this is on page 75, Pathways page 75, when we talk about detoxing or toxin, that the body it says, inactivity is a fruitful cause of disease. Exercise quickens and equalizes the circulation of the blood. But idleness, but in idleness, the blood does not circulate freely and the changes in it so necessary to life and health do not take place. It says, impurities are not expelled as they would be if the circulation had been quickened by vigorous exercise. The skin kept in a healthy condition and the lungs fed with plenty of pure, fresh air. So what we are being told here, as Dr. Grievous mentioned, is that you expel your toxin in part just through proper breathing as, as the lungs detoxify, but also through exercise. Exercise helps to stimulate the lymph glands or the lymph nodes, and so that, that helps in terms of eliminating waste from the body as well. If you are regular as you should be, that also helps to eliminate. So in essence, if we, and I heard someone say it earlier, I think it was Sister Sarah, if we are utilizing the foods that God has given us, there's no need for detoxing. 
What we're finding though, when people are detoxing, some